Last week, I posted a video on Battlefield 1's new incursions mode, and I gave you all the details I could at the time. It's a 5v5 competitive experience that's being developed from the ground up to support competitive play, ranking, and competitions. The team behind it have now given me the green light to go ahead and release some footage of it so that you can finally get some idea of how this plays out. I'll be giving my opinions overall on it today, and that will feature some good points and some not so good points, so let's get into it. I'm going to start with an overall impression. What the team have created is something that truly captures all of what Battlefield is, and I think they've succeeded in scaling it down into a 5v5 setting. The heavily modified giant shadow map that you're watching right now has been curated to fit this game mode to make sure that it plays out in a fair, consistent way. One key point that to me is really important, and I think to others as well, will be that along with incursions making sure that the map suits the game mode, the team have made sure that at half time, in the middle of this game mode, the map's destructive characteristics are reset. This was a major issue in previous iterations of competitive modes within Battlefield, both official and unofficial, that the destruction couldn't be reset during rounds, and therefore that might give one team perhaps a line of sight advantage, for example, or not offer another team a chance to use that destruction again in another round. It's a small point maybe, but one that I'm really happy has been fixed. Moving on, the draft system that DICE has created for the mode fits well, and I think they've created a series of kits that you can easily pick from, coordinate with your team to make sure you're picking the right kits that will cover off all the bases in the round that you're planning for. Now, not all of the weapons and not all of the gadgets that are included in Battlefield 1 are on offer in these kits, and some of the weapons have actually switched classes to make more sense depending on what role they might be trying to fill. And don't worry, there is no automatico in incursions at the moment. The development team decided to take that out because really, it's an outlier in the assault class. Now I know there is one assault kit that has access to the 1907 sweeper, which is a fully automatic medic weapon in the main game. Overall, I think the kit system is a good move because it makes sure that all the different roles on the battlefield are being filled and everybody is working together. I do have my reservations about this as well, however. Incursions is being built on this scale that will allow anyone to just pick it up and play if they want to. Brand new players to the franchise can play, seasoned veterans and professional players can just jump on and start playing as well. Brand new players might become confused as to why some of the weapons and gadgets have switched classes or have changed their characteristics. Oh yeah, I should probably mention that. There are certain weapons in the game that don't perform the same in the base game as they do here in Incursion. So, for example, the grenade crossbow sits with the squad leader kit, not the support kit and it fires smoke grenades, not explosive ones. Again, it's just a small adjustment point, but it might cause a little bit of a jarring experience for some players, and it might take a little bit of getting used to. The gameplay itself in Incursions feels great because essentially it's no different to standard Battlefield 1, and we know that that game is very slick, it runs fairly smoothly, and so the gunplay and the battles that you have are really nice. Now, just before I carry on, it's worth noting that I played Incursions on a LAN setup at Gamescom. It might change slightly when you play over an internet connection in the closed alpha, just because you're going to have to deal with certain latencies. Now, the 5v5 mode centers around three flags which must be captured in order, starting with your home flag, then the central flag, and then the enemy flag on the other side of the map. That means you can't just flank all the way round and cap their flag if you don't have the central one first, which means gameplay is moving backwards and forwards all the time in a nice fluid motion, and it means that there's always a breakthrough point for the losing team to make a comeback. The flags are valuable to your team, as they'll award you points if you hold a majority. They're a key part of the mode that you need to make sure that you're paying attention to. And with that, I'll move on to the scoring so that you can understand how this game mode really works. Incursions uses various gameplay aspects to calculate the score. The first layer is called sets. These sets are made up of 15 tickets each, 
and the tickets are awarded for various actions that can happen on the battlefield. The first team to score 15 tickets wins the set. There are many different ways that you can get tickets. Killing an enemy gets your team one ticket. Destroying the enemy team's tank gets you one ticket. Wiping the entire enemy team gets you three tickets. And as I said, owning flags earns your team tickets over time. Every 14 seconds, flags will award you one ticket if you hold the majority of flags. Say your team owns two flags and the enemy team owns one, then your team will be awarded two tickets because you own the majority. The enemy team won't get any tickets because they don't own a majority. Flags are synchronized across the map and they will award their tickets at the same time every 14 seconds. You can only capture flags in order, however, as I mentioned earlier, so it's worth focusing on the next flag rather than one behind it. And one final way that you can earn or save tickets, reviving fallen teammates will save a ticket from the enemy team, and that potentially could mean them dropping back away from winning the set. Once your team wins a set, your team is awarded one overall point. This is the second layer to the scoring system. The first team to score 11 points wins the match overall. After 10 sets have been played, halftime occurs and the teams switch sides. This is where the destruction also resets. As each set is won or lost, progression towards the 15 tickets needed to win the set is reset and then each team starts from zero tickets again. Sounds a little bit confusing, but once you've played a few rounds, it becomes very easy to understand. The scoring system is designed to be fair and even and allow a losing team to make a comeback. With many different ways to score tickets within a set, owning all the flags is not really necessary to win, but it will definitely benefit you if you hold the majority. Team play aspects like reviving and resupplying, which are in the base game, are even more important than ever. Reviving a player can save you a ticket, and resupplying your squad mates means they've got the ammo to take down enemies. Taking down the tank and killing the driver, you're going to score two points for doing that. One for the driver and one for the tank, so teamwork is definitely needed. And the ultimate reward is the triple cap of all the flags. Every 14 seconds, you'll get three tickets towards the set, and that means you're going to be winning the set very quickly. I'll touch on vehicles just for a second because I know a lot of people out there are raising their eyebrows at their inclusion, but to me, having played it, they definitely made sense. Each team has access to vehicle operator kits, but only one of them can be chosen, so you've only got one designated vehicle driver. You don't have to use a vehicle operator kit on your team if you don't want to, but they are extremely powerful once you get your hands on a vehicle. The vehicles are on spawn timers in incursions, so you can't just jump in a tank straight away and go into the battle. The two vehicles you can choose from right now are the armoured car and the light tank, with the spawn timer being longer for the tank and shorter for the car. If your vehicle gets destroyed, the shell of the vehicle will remain on the battlefield for the remainder of the half and it can be used as cover. There's an in-game progression system within incursions using the new specializations as a mold. This applies to vehicles as well. As you play, you'll rank up your kits and unlock different specializations to adapt your soldier. And thus, if you're a vehicle driver, your vehicle. The top level specialization for the armored car replaces the machine gun with a light cannon that has plenty of splash damage. Really good fun to use. Vehicles felt like a real threat when I played Incursions, as they can be very powerful against infantry, but most of the assault and support kits had equipment that you can use to combat them, just like standard Battlefield 1, and it kind of felt like the vehicles and the infantry were kind of trading blows the whole round. Of course the vehicle can take out an infantry straight away, but if infantry teamed up together and used their explosives at the right time, they could take down that tank very quickly. Vehicles are even more of a threat to the squad leader, as that is the only class that you can spawn onto in incursions. It's either you spawn onto them, or you spawn at the closest HQ, which could be 50 to 75 meters from the action. 
Something else I'd like to add at the end here, at the moment the UI isn't very intuitive, but this is something the team are fully aware of and are working to improve with the closed alpha launching very soon. The two layers of scoring, the sets and the overall score, are sometimes hard to take from the UI and that can lead to some confusion, but this will be worked on. Overall, I've really enjoyed my experience with Incursions so far, and I'm excited to get more hands-on in the closed alpha if I manage to get in. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section, and I'll try and get involved and answer some of your questions. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.